Good afternoon, this is Pastor Samson. Welcome to Tuesday afternoon Bible study. We want to discuss a, a word called participation, which means being a partaker of participation, being a partaker of. We want to take this word from, from, from amongst God's writings. There's, there's a problem in the earth realm uh, It's called singing. And sin is, is not necessarily against man, but it's against God. And there are a group of people in this season, in 2021, called saints. And saints of the living God is simply put into the earth realm to defend things that God says is against his word. So we defend the throne and the will of God through the power that Jesus Christ has given us. We defend the throne and the will of God through the power of him being crucified and resurrected which Jesus transferred to us and left us in the earth realm. We, we mean to discuss something and we want to set some things in writing. So we're going to stop by Proverbs, the 19th chapter, and we're going to read something. And, and, and it reads as, Proverbs 19, 21 says, There are many devices in a man's heart. He said there are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. It's the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. Now, we need to let that sink in because it's the counsel of the Lord. No matter what the devices are in a man's heart, it is the absolute counsel of the Lord that is going to stand from the beginning all the way to the end, the counsel of the Lord. The word of the Lord is going to stand. So, saying all that, we're going to go back to the beginning of the Bible. And we're going to establish something. But before we go back to the beginning of the Bible in Genesis 1, we're going to stop by and turn back to Jeremiah 29. Because in Jeremiah 29, God is saying, I know that I have plans for you. I know the plans that I have for you. That means God has an intentional plan for man, male and female, and that according to Solomon's writings in Proverbs 19, 21, that whatever plan God has for man, the counsel of God will stand. That's, that means that's irreversible. Whatever God's intent for man is, whatever God's plan is for man, it will stand. There's no God. There's no sin. There's no devil. There's no world. There's no place that can overrule the power, the dunamis power of God's will. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God in the strong name of Jesus, Father, here we are. Let your Holy Spirit lead us into your low ghost reign of word. Touch heart, soul, mind all over the airways. Father, in the name of Jesus, lead someone to be encouraged. Lead someone, Father, from that backslidden state. Lord, lead someone to be lifted up, God, out of the miry clay and see you in all your glory and how big you are and just how big your love for your creation is. Let us, Lord, as we come up under the sound of truth that will set us free, let us be set free. For your word is freedom. And in it is power, love, joy, peace, and humbleness. And in it is salvation. For this is your servant, friend, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We, 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 we want to get an understanding that what I am doing now in this Bible study, and I do it on Tuesdays, I do it on, on, on Thursdays, and I do it on, on Sunday mornings. This is an extension of the ministry of our church. We do this because we want to use every avenue to share God's word that somebody might be lifted, that somebody might be encouraged, that somebody might come looking to see what it is and all the zeal and the drive that we have about this God that we are talking about. This is an extension of our love that comes from God for his love for all mankind and his will for them to be saved. So we come to sacrifice our time 
we come to not only sacrifice our time, but to sacrifice a word from the Lord that it might touch somebody lost soul, that it might touch somebody downtrodden soul, that it might lift that widow or that downtrodden beggar up, that it might lift that one that's dwelling on the edge of suicide, that it might do something to encourage just even the least of the little one. So this is why we're here. So we've already touched that the counsel of God is going to stand. As a matter of fact, when you stop by Matthew, it says not one jot or one tittle of God's word will fall to the ground before it accomplish what God sends it out to do. So it, it, the word of God is established as true, as a fact, and it is established as dunamis power, and it is established of not only as being a word, but being a word with power to deliver your lost soul. So, we are we're here to establish that God has intentionally visualized something for man. And in order for us to continue to preach and teach what the saints' authority is in the earth realm, to preach and teach the opportunity that the saint has to bring God's glory. In order for us to preach and teach with understanding of what the counsel of God wants, we got to go to the scriptures because hearsay is not the power of the word of God that will set you free, but the word that comes from the Bible Is what will set you free. So we're going to try to stay as close to the Bible as we can. So the first scripture was Proverbs 19, 21. And we wanted to establish that there are many devices in a man's heart. But the counsel of God will stand. We want to go by Jeremiah 21, 11, 29, 11 and establish that God has an intentional plan and a purpose and an ordained assignment for mankind, male and female. Now we want to go to God's original intent for man, male and female, and we want to discuss it because we want to absolutely establish in your understanding tonight, in your understanding tonight, that you are a defender if you are a saint going to church, if you are calling yourself a Christian, you are a defender of the throne of God and what God's will is. And if anything that you see in the earth realm during your due state, from zero to 120 years, Genesis 6, 3, anytime you see something that's out of line with the word that you live by, Matthew 4, 4, you are to take a stance against against it. If you are not declaring and you are not declaring, you should be praying to tell God as a watchman and a saint what you are seeing that is operating against his counsel and his plan. Let us let us go to Genesis 1. In Genesis 1, there was something so proverbially said that a lot of times we miss and omit the reading of God's word. But we should not omit something that has so much dunamis power in it. We should take our time and get an understanding of a word that came with deliverance. And it is our understanding, not us being ignorant to this word, but our understanding of this word that delivers us, that restores our soul, that regenerates us, that allows us to be a mediator between a lost and dying world and reconciling that lost and dying world, that lost loved one, that lost brother, that lost son, that lost daughter, reconciling them back to a relationship with God. That's what a saint does. They are reconcilers. But we're going to cover all that. But first we must prove an important 
intentional vision that God had for man. And we're going to do it from Genesis 1, 26. And Genesis 1, 26, it simply says, and God says, who said it? Who's speaking? Let's take our time. Who said it? And God said it. God said, let us. Who is he talking about? He said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And then he said something so profound that most people miss it. So here, let's, let's really put it in perspective. God is saying, let us, the creators of the atmosphere, the hangers of the stars, the commanders of the seasons, the speaker to the sun, the director of righteous paths, the regenerator, restore, the shepherd that leads the grace, the mercy, the forgiveness, the repentance. He said, let us, let them. Let me read it to you. And God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let them have. Let them. Let us, said let them. Let us, said we're going to make them in our image and in our likeness and we're going to let them do what? Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the face of the earth. Over every creeping thing. That's that's why we're here. Because let us, who is making and creating man, male and female, is saying, let man, male and female, have dominion to subdue everything that creepeth upon the face of the earth. And Satan might not be walking the earth, but his evil spirit is walking the earth, and his evil imps and demons is walking the earth. So he's saying, let them have dominion over anything that creeps upon the face of the earth. So the question would be, if God gave that, if God's intentions was, if God's purpose was for mankind, who was the image and likeness of him, to have the intent to have dominion over anything that creeps upon the face of the earth, that means that anything that comes into the earth atmosphere for redeemed man, the contentional, intentional vision that God has for man, who is the image and likeness of him, is still standing and nothing can upset what the counsel of God has spoke over man. Because if man has been redeemed by the blood of the lamb, then that means they have been restored to the original intent that God meant for them to be in the very first place. And if you have said, yes, Jesus, then that means that you are not a participant to defend God's throne and anything that operates in the earth realm against God's will as you watch in your house, in your community, in your family, on your job, everywhere your being is, anything that you see that operates up against the throne of God and his will, according to Paul, you are to cast it down. Anything that exalts itself up against the knowledge of God. Now, with this dominion that's coming, that man has, that let us, has given let them, we want to take a look at the authority. That's called, That's what dominion means. We want to look at the authority that God has given what we would call the saint, what we would call the many member body, what we would call the church. Because in Matthew 16, it says that Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Well, if you are participating, he's saying actually in, 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 in Genesis 1, 26, He's actually saying, he said, man has the authority, has the stewardship to look around and see anything that's creeping upon the face of the earth. Because Psalms 8 says, I crown him over the works of my hands. This is not a new story. 
this is old covenant, but this is God's intention for man to for him to manage his earth, defending the oracles of God, defending the will of God, and defending the throne of God, and for man to absolutely participate in what God's intentions for man actually is to be, male and female. So let us go to Ephesians. And in Ephesians 6, we just want to stop by and look a minute. And in Ephesians 6, it says something. In Ephesians 6, it says, put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, 11. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, which means his schemes to deceive as he creeps upon the face of the earth, because 2 Corinthians 4 4 said he is the God of this world that uses his bling bling, that uses his fiery darts, that uses his desires and his appetite to blind the mind, to devour you. He's a predator, but he does not have the power. To do anything with the saint unless he can penetrate the mind of the saint. Unless he can manipulate the mind of the saint. Luke 10, 18 and 19 says, "He, we have power over all power of the enemy. But the intentions of what God, the counsel of God told us from the very beginning of Genesis 1, 26 was simply this. He said, hey, ain't nothing that creeping upon the face of the earth is going to have power to subdue or have dominion over what us, let us, is going to make to let them have that dominion. In other words, God irreversed it, but Satan came and poured it down, and God sent Jesus to set it back up. So man has been restored in the second Adam to what he was supposed to be in the first Adam. So therefore, man should not be rising and falling to what the flesh, to what the world or Satan is doing because man does not live but what the world, what the flesh and what Satan is saying. Man that is in God, man being the image and likeness of God, man being a side to have dominion to subdue anything that creepeth upon the face of the earth. We're not talking tonight about a breath and a purpose. We're not talking about that predator out there running from woman to woman. We are talking about a man that God said, let us, let them participate and have dominion to subdue anything that creeps upon the face of earth. That means that when Satan comes and approaches what God deemed to be a man and the intentions for a man, male and female, that the dominion to subdue that he intentionally gave them in Genesis 1, 26, through Jesus Christ, the second Adam, is still standing right now. And anyone that says, yes, Jesus has that power to stand against the wiles and the schemes and the deception of Satan, and only power Satan has is to try to manipulate the mind. But if you are a participant in the will of God, you have power over God. You have a power over the God of this earth realm because you have power from the God, from the counsel of the God, the one that said, let us, let them. You need to get this. Because a lot of people going to church are not living in the intent of what God actually spoke over them. But Satan knows the power you have. It is you that don't know. So Satan, anytime Satan will approach Jesus the Christ right after God has just announced in Matthew 4, 4, this is... My beloved son, and who I am well pleased. And then Satan jumps on Jesus in the wilderness and began to preach to Jesus. 
twisted word and Jesus is the word made flesh. He'll preach to anybody if you let him inside the battleground of your mind to where he can just subdue and have dominion over you, to where he can manipulate your mind. But in the power, the dunamis power of the name of Jesus, you don't have to reason with Satan because he has to creep upon the face of the earth to even approach your mind. You can be a participant in the intentional vision, in the intentional purpose, in the intentional plan that God has for you. Plans of peace. As a matter of fact, he says, because God's love was moved towards us, his creation. He says in Jeremiah 29 that he will perform his good work, his promises of love towards us. He said in Jeremiah 29 that the fulfillment of these promises that we must pray, seek, and search. He said in Jeremiah 29, 11, that he would hearken and that they should find him provided we seek him with all our whole heart. If we are doing these things, we need to have an understanding that first and foremost, anything upon the face of the earth, we as 1 Peter 2, 9, being a holy people, a, a royal priesthood, we, through Jesus the Christ, the second Adam, we are defenders of anything that does not line up with what the word of God said. We are to stand as soldiers armored up in the evil day. I don't care what the storm looks like. I don't care what your life looks like. I don't care what your money looks like. We are to stand with faith in what God said and defend it to the very day. Denying ourselves, picking up our cross and following him. Sickness does not have any hold on you unless it can manipulate your mind because sickness only can touch the flesh. Sickness cannot do anything with your soul. Poverty cannot do anything with your soul. It can only threaten your flesh to make your flesh think, I can't have my desires. I can't have my appetite. But it is flesh. That if you're not careful, that will hold you bondage to the world and Satan. It is not the soul. Once the soul has got a whiff of a relationship with God Almighty, it can be set free. And the flesh and the world and Satan cannot hold it bound because the soul being restored will realize that the ransom has been paid, that the soul is being regenerated and restored, and I have now been set free by sin confessing with my mouth and believing in my heart and what God plan is for me, what God intentions is for me, that is who I am. I don't care what my life says. I don't care what my money says. I don't care what my husband says. I don't care what my wife says. I am the righteousness of God. So therefore, when you allow flesh, the world, and Satan to manipulate your mind, he don't care nothing about your dirt that you look at in the mirror. He don't care nothing about the world. All he wants to do is use the world to blind your mind. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy and devour you and sift you like wheat so that you will never have the understanding in the legal battle of your mind to have God's intention, God's plan, God's purpose, God's assignment for yourself. If you ever get a hold of the relationship that God went through for you to have, what it is you have and build that relationship right with him, what flesh the world and Satan is doing, it seems to be secondary. It'll never be important to you because if you really look at the conclusion of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you would have an understanding that all flesh does, if you're not storing the treasures of God inside your earthen vessel, all that flesh does, it is cursed, it is nothing but dirt, and it will keep you distracted by any flesh that wants to for lift they suit. 
It is the flesh that wants the Stacy Adams and the Reeboks. It is the flesh that wants the Cadillac and the Corvette. It is the flesh that wants the word of Derby. It is the flesh that wants the bling bling. It is the flesh that's being blinded and distracted by Satan's world and the distractions of the appetite to build time and spend time worshiping, going after other things other than God. It is the flesh that has these cravings, and it is the flesh that seals the, sends the signals to your mind that will make you look at other things and make them idol gods because you are spending all your awakening time with them and never paying attention to the God that awakens you out of the bed every morning of every day that you wake up in time. It is the flesh that wants the world that Satan produced. But if you train the soul to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, if you present, present your dirt body to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord, which is your reasonable service, you can be renewed in your mind, be transformed by the power of the word of God to be, let them, a participant of guarding the throne of God in his week, this past Saturday, a preview of what's coming Thursday. Be with us, if you will.